أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد ثم السلام على آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم الأجمعين إلى يوم الدين صلوات اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد السلام عليك يا با عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر الأحد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وفرقانه الحميد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So we're looking at the ayah of Quran from Surah Al-Teen where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says indeed we have created the human being in the most excellent form and then we looked at the story of the mouse and the frog a little bit about it today so both were tied if you remember with the string both their feet were tied with the string because the mouse always wanted the frog right near her and the string gets entangled and Molana Rumi calls it the longing string or the long string and as the vulture or the crow is pulling the mouse up and that represents death and the mouse represents the body the frog is dangling which is the soul and it's that time that the frog laments that it should have tied itself to one of its own kind so if I paraphrase that, the longing string in our relationship should have been tied to Q Hussein, the brand Q Hussein, while still maintaining a relationship with the mouse, which is the body. Now, the benchmark of brand Q Hussein is exactly the same benchmark of brand Q Muhammad. Because remember, the Prophet said, Awaluna Muhammad, wa akharuna Muhammad, wa wasatuna Muhammad, wa kulluna Muhammad. The first is Muhammad, the last is Muhammad, the middle is Muhammad, and all of them are Muhammad. So basically, it is tying ourselves to the Ahlul Bayt. So what identifies us as being Husseini or Muhammadi, if I can say that? What is it? Or Ahlul Bayti? What is it? Well, the benchmark is how you and I deal with creation. There is an underlying thing. We've got our beliefs and we'll talk about that. But the underlying thing is what I would probably call TTC. Truthfulness, trustworthiness and compassion. And these three is not either or. You, can, you can't say, well, I'm truthful, but I'm not compassionate. They've all got to go together. However, when we look at TTC, when we look at the amount of work or we look at the everything that all the Aimma did 
there has to be an underlying source that energizing them, energizes them, something that does it. So before I go into the last, the words of Imam Hussein, which you can see on your screen, these were the words that Imam Hussein said when he told us the bus to ask the enemy, to ask the enemy ranks for one more night. And remember, he was mocked about it. But when he was asked why he wanted that extra night, and that's when he said, "And I'll salah. I love salah. Wa talawa to kitabihi, and I love to recite his book. Wa kathra to taha, and I love to do loads of duhas. Wa istighfar, and I like to ask for forgiveness." So before we go on to there, let's look at the underlying strength that we need to be able to display the characteristics of the Prophet which Imam Hussein did to a T. So I'd like to look at the Surah of the Quran, which is known as Surah al Muzammil. Now this surah is surah number 73. Muzammil is 73, 74 is Muddathir. Now Muzammil is the wrapped one, Muddathir is the covered one. And sometimes you think, what is the difference? But Muzammil is wrapping yourself in comfort, right? Like when you when you want to be hugged. You know, when you take a wrap around you and you wrap yourself, you just feel cool. While mudathir is wrapping oneself or covering oneself because of anxiety or cold or anything of that sort, where, where you're, you're, you're maybe pulling your coat closer to yourself. So muzamil, zamiluni, oh, wrap me, hug me in a cloak, right? 20 ayat, it's a makisura. He focused is the importance of conversing with divinity at night to be able to get the strength for daytime responsibilities. And it sort of fits Imam Hussain of Islam to a T on that last night. Remember, Muzammil is also one of the seven names by which the Prophet is addressed in the Quran. There's Ahmed, there's Muhammad, there's Taha, there's Yasin, there's Muddathir, and there's Abdullah. Just as a side bit, Salatul Layl was made wajib before the five daily prayers were established. And the last ayah of this surah sort of modifies it to make it voluntary. So think about the surah. So think of Surah Al-Muzzamil. And we've divided it into three sections. So in the first section, we find the conversing with divinity at night, giving strength to deal with the relentless work in the daytime. So we look what it says. Ya ayyuhal muzzamil. Oh, you who are wrapped up in your garments. Remember I said zammiluni is that comfort wrapping. Kumil layla illa kalila. Rise to pray in the night except a little. This is talking about salat al layl. Remember what Imam Hussain said. And now hippo salah. Nisfahu awin kusminu kalila. Half of it or lessen it a little. And then I have four. أَوْزِدْ عَلَيْهِ وَرَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا Or increase it a little bit, but recite the Qur'an as it ought to be recited. So, tartil is sort of the calming down, the clearly, the properly, the extra slow recitation. There's extra time, so recite it slow at night. I go back to Imam Hussain. I love Salah. I love to recite his book. And then he says, Inna sanulki alayka kawlan thakila. We will make the heavy word light for you. In other words, responsibility about to be given to you to take the message out. The strength will come from closeness to Allah. Look at Imam Hussain asking for that last night, for a day, Ashura, for a day which needed so much strength, so much spiritual strength. And that strength came from his salah and his recitation of the book. Look what Allah says in Ayah 6. He says, In the nashiat al the rising of the night, it's the firmest way to tread and the best corrective form of speech as such. So in other words, this is the best time to speak with them. It is the best time um, to, to establish oneself with divinity and that's at night and then he says Inna laka fin nahari sabhan tawila. during the day you have a long occupation there's a great deal of activity think of Imam Hussain in the day of Ashura there was so much to do 
That's where his strength came from. And then, And remember the name of your Rabb. وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ tabtila And devote yourself to him totally. That means cut yourself off from everyone but him. Tabattal is to cut off. You know, in other words, you will set an example for others. And oh my goodness, did Imam Hussein do that? Set an example for absolutely everyone. So if you look at Surah Al-Muzammil and you compare these notes about what to do at night to be able to get the strength to to do stuff in the morning, it comes from these four aspects. The section, the second section of Surah Al-Muzammil, and I'd like to just go over it quickly so we understand it, talks about the warning to those who reject divinity. Allah says, don't worry, divinity will deal with them on the day of accountability. You do your best. Remember, that's why Sayyidah Zainab said, when she was asked, how did you find the day of Ashura? And she said, Jamila. I saw nothing but beauty because they did their best and then handed it over to him. And let's see what he says. He says, Wasbir ala ma Have sabr, bear patiently with what they say. Wahajuruhum mahajran jamila and avoid them with an avoidance. And then look what he says. It's scary. Wazarni wal mukadibin. Leave me and the rejectors. Those who possess ease and luxury and plenty, and we're going to give them a little bit of respite. Leave me, I will deal with them. I will give them time, but I will deal with them. And then there are scary bits about Jahannam. Inna ladayna ankaala wa jahima. We have heavy fetters, heavy ties, shackles, and a flaming fire. And food that chokes and a painful punishment. This is for those who did injustice to others. So the second section looks at those. It's a warning to those who reject divine guidance. And the third section enjoins a recitation. It's only one eye. It's eye 20. It's a long eye. Try and read it. It's enjoining the recitation of Quran, the establishing of Salah, the giving of Zakah, and asking for forgiveness. And that's the last thing that Imam Hussain says here. Well, istighfar and asking for forgiveness. And you and I might think, he was a masoom. Why would he ask for forgiveness? Why would he ask for cover? But remember, istighfar comes from ghafra. And ghifar is like a helmet that you wear on your head to protect yourself from the consequences of that which is wrong. But Imam is teaching us, and is gives some example to us, that this is what you do at night, to be able to have your strength in the morning, to do right, to stand up to injustice, to become free from everyone except Allah. Remember, he's known as Abu Laharar, the father of freedom. And that's the bird which signifies freedom. So now, how does this manifest itself? How does it, and I said TTC, which is pretty, pretty straight, but truthfulness, trustworthiness, and compassion, they're pretty sort of generic. How do we deal with them in detail? How do they come out? So let's first look from a hadith at the five main behaviors of one who believes. Right? Let's see what they say. So the first characteristic of a believer is that he is continuously in thought continuously thinking you know the quran is filled with all that do you think do you ponder so it's constantly in thinking the second thing zikr he remember remembrance of allah is loud you know all the traditions say i remember um somebody from about 30 or 40 years ago oh my goodness shows how old i am so a long time ago and I remember walking with him to go and visit somebody at a hospital near Stanmore, where we're based. And I remember walking up this road, which took about 20 minutes. And throughout this road, he kept saying, Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah, MashaAllah. Every time he saw a daisy, he would say, oh, MashaAllah, look at that daisy. He saw a butterfly and he'd say, oh my goodness. And I would think, oh my goodness, what's he doing? And at first I thought maybe it was just, I don't know, just, just trying to teach me something maybe. But as I spent more time with him, I found that was his, his, that was his way of life. All the time, he would remember Allah. And it's really important to do that. Talk to him while you're driving, I don't know, doing your work. 
just continually in zikr of Allah. And that means to be maybe able to also learn the Asma al Husna. Maybe we could do one a week. Learn them. But definitely, you know, we always hear about Sayyidah Fatima al Zahra. When she's cooking, she's got her tasbih with her. She's always doing, you know, some sort of zikr of Allah. And these are things that we need to take over in our lives. So that's the second manifestation of being a believer, or second behavior. The first, constantly in thought. The second I said was zikr, constant remembrance and remembrance of Allah loudly. So to be able to use all the terminology we have. The third is that they're always seeking knowledge, absolutely everywhere. Divine reward that is given to a person is based on the level of knowledge and intelligence. Now the knowledge has to be used, so it's not we're not supposed to be a Google bank. But they're always seeking somewhere to learn, always. Um, it could be absolutely anything. You've got to keep your mind occupied, especially in these days of what I call lockdown. We don't go out that much. We don't travel well unless it's absolutely necessary. And we are confined and the rules are changing every single day. So you've got so much time at home and it's time to learn. My goodness, there's so much online. It, you know, you could become anything online. Everybody is posting stuff that we could learn so much from. So really, really important to be able to use this time, this, this, this awesome time that Allah has given us to be able to learn. The fourth thing about a believer, these are the five main ones. So the fourth one is there is forbearance. There is sabr. Sabr is patience and perseverance. The greater the knowledge, the greater the forbearance, the greater the ability to hold oneself, not just be impulsive. So that is a benchmark that we need to look at. And the fifth one, my goodness, this is probably one of the most important ones around. His method of speech, a believer's method of speech is beautiful. And when he or she discusses or speaks to others, it is through beautiful exhortation and they do not resort to a war of words or harsh disputes. We really got to watch what we say. If you record what you say in a day, I mean, we've all got these phones that record everything. So maybe one day, just put it on from the time you wake up till the time you go to sleep, you might need to charge it a few times. And do nothing, just listen to the words you're saying. You might find something that may need a bit of a change. The Prophet said every human being lies under his or her tongue. There was a person who came to the Prophet and said that her father had, um, or his father was a guy, said his father had um, committed for him to marry this woman who ticked all the boxes. She was phenomenal. But he said, Ya Rasulullah, the only problem is she has a really harsh tongue. Her words are really harsh. You know, the Prophet told him, run away from her like sheep run away from a wolf. Our words are really, really important. That's how we manifest ourselves. So I'm going to go over these five again. And inshallah tomorrow we will look at Surah Al-Furqan where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now expands on our behavior. It's like a tick list that we've got to go through. But first, these five. So if I were to say that I am Brand Hussein, that I would like to be Husseini, known as Husseini, and I think that is the greatest accolade we can have. I mentioned in the last couple of days that the words of Abbas, I absolutely adore. Abbas was a companion of Imam Hussein in um, Karbala when he said, Hubbul Hussein Achunnani. The love of Hussein has made me crazy. And if there was nothing I would get take back to my creator, but those words that I can live up to, at least I'm trying hard to live up to, brand Q Hussein, my goodness, I would. So these are the first five manifestations. One, continuously in thought. Two, loud remembrance of Allah. So my words are peppered with the word Allah. Third, always seeking knowledge in everything. Trying to find something to learn everywhere. The fourth, forbearance. The greater the knowledge, the greater the forbearance, the greater the sabr. And the fifth one, the speech is beautiful. The words are beautiful. If you don't have anything good to say, it's probably better 
just to keep quiet. There's so many different ways in saying something. And the, and the right way is, oh my God, the best way. So I'm going to end with a story before we go into Messiah about um, the, the astrologer, somebody who could tell the future, who comes up to the Khalifa, Harun Rashid, and he he's asks him, can you tell me a little bit about my life? And the guy says, oh my goodness, it doesn't look very good. Because all your relations are going to die before you. You're going to be left all alone. He got so angry, so angry. He said, all your loved, your near ones and dear ones are going to die. Then he got so angry, he subjected the man to punishment. He called another astrologer. The other guy comes and says, Mashallah, you have such a long life, my goodness. Because he dreamt that all his teeth were falling out, by the way. But anyway, he said, Mashallah, you have such a long life. You're going to outlive absolutely everyone. God has granted you the na'ma of a long life. And he gifts this guy with lots of presents. Now, what was the difference between the two? Absolutely nothing. Just the way it was portrayed. And absolutely everybody, all psychologists, all psychotherapists will tell you that your words have an effect. They leave a long-lasting effect. When somebody beats you up, that can heal. But words don't heal. They cut through your heart or they revive your heart. I mean, just look at the words of the Quran and the words of the Masumi. Look at the words of Imam Hussein. It's phenomenal. So to end, the strength comes from four things. Salah, the recitation of the book, lots of dua, and istighfar. So if we take anything back, maybe to before tomorrow, and we make it a habit to maybe with our wajib salah, start with a little bit of nafila. And if you can't manage all of them, at least with Isha, it's just two rakat sitting down. And my goodness, don't forget shab or salatul layl or salatul tahajjud, whatever you call it. If you can't recite it, um, just before Fajr and you find it hard because these days at the moment in summer I mean the time is about just after three o'clock that's a little bit early or half past three or quarter to four but it's still early in any case if you cannot recite then at least just before you go to sleep just one rakat of width or start and then add Shafa to it my goodness the benefits look at what Imam asks for one night of respite for this so Salah and my God, recite the Quran. It moves mountains. It literally, 10 ayat after every salah. Can't be that difficult. It's phenomenal. And talk to him. Da'a is to talk to him. Talk to him in your own language. Definitely read the du'as of the Masameen. But talk to him in your own language. And istighfar continually. So I'll refer you to the ayah of Quran. And tomorrow we might talk about it. Surah number 8, ayah 33. And Allah gives his word. He will not punish those who do istighfar. It's in the Quran. It's his word. So if we have a habit of reciting istighfar all the time, and istighfar means we have to focus on what we're asking forgiveness for, my goodness, it will take us somewhere. Inshallah, we will continue this tomorrow. But today, let's go to Karbala. My goodness. You know, we recite Ziyarat Waritha. And if you don't do so, it's a beautiful Ziyarat. So in Ziyarat Waitha, which is taught by Imam Sadiq, we say, Biya bi antum wa ummi tibtum. My mom and my dad, they're sacrificed for you. Watabatil ardul lati fiha dufintum. The earth you are buried in has become pure. Now this earth, we talk about Karbala. May Allah grant us the opportunity to visit Karbala as soon as we can after all these this lockdown opens. Rather than say, I want to go on holiday, my goodness, let's try and make an intention of going to visit Hussein. So Hur is one of those people who is amongst those buried there where the earth has become pure. Now he had a paradigm shift. So let's see what he did. He was the one who stopped Imam going to Kufa. He was the one who diverted Imam to Karbala, number one. He moved, he was one of those present in the meeting where they moved the camp away from the river. He called for reinforcements. He's the one who wrote a letter asking for re reinforcements. 
you know what? He was present in the meeting to stop water to the Ahlul Bayt on the 7th of Muharram. So can you, let's place him in one place there. That's Ghor. On the 9th of Muharram, he's agitated. He can't rest. There is something in him that doesn't make sense. And in the darkness of the night, which is the 9th of the 10th, he's pacing up and down. And he's asked, are you, are you nervous? What's the matter? And he says, I hear the children of Zahra crying of thirst. They're saying, Al-Atash, Al-Atash, they're thirsty. Um, in Nafas al-Mamun, uh, Nafas al-Mahamun by Sheikh Abbas Ikumi, he says, in a dream, he sees Sayyida. And Sayyida Fatima says, Hur, what wrong did my son do to you? What did Hussein do to you? He wakes up. There, there are many narrations. The Zakirin say that he dreamt that he was in between Jannah and Jahannam, or the fire and the valley, and you know he had a choice of where to go. As soon as he wakes up in the morning, he comes out of his tent, and he sees his soldiers cooling the legs of the horses by pouring water on them. And on the other hand, on the other side, he could hear in the distance the crying of the children of Hussein saying, Al-Atash, Al-Atash. That's when he has a paradigm shift. He just takes his son and his slave and he goes near the camp of Imam Hussein. He crosses sides. When he gets near, he gets down. He ties his hands with a handkerchief. And on his knees, he calls to Imam Hussein. Imam sends Hazrat Abbas to say, our guest has come, bring him to me. When he comes to Imam Hussein, he places his head at his feet and he says, Oh, the son of the mercy to the worlds. Oh, the son of Rahmatullil Alameen, the greatest sinner in the world has come to you. Let me tell you about Imam's response. We talked about words and the effect they have. You know what Imam says? Imam said, Akhi, Hur, my brother, Hur, come. Abbas, my guest has come. Imam said, Imam looks at him and he turns to Imam and he says, Oh, son of Fatima, forgive me, forgive me. Imam tells him, your mother named you Hur, which is to be free. You are free in this world and in the Akhira. And Ta'akhi fi dunya wal Akhira. This is Imam telling him, You are my brother in the dunya and the Akhira. He tells Imam that I would like to be the first of all those who lays down his life. I want to go. I am so embarrassed. Imam tells him, I am embarrassed tells him that when you were my enemy I had enough water but now that you're my guest I have none who says I want my son to go first I want him to go and fight and when his son fell Imam said no father should have to carry the body of his son and Imam goes to bring this the, the body of the son of Hur back to the camps I just like to say Ya Abba Abdullah, when Ali Akbar fell, when Qasim fell, you went. You're the one who went. And you're telling Hur that no father should go. When Hur fell, there was a large cut on his forehead. Imam runs to him, cleans it, and ties a handkerchief made by his mom, say the Zahra, to the, to the wound many, many years later. There was a ruler called Shah Abbas Safa wanted to see the greatness of the martyrs, of the Shaheed. So he dug open the grave of Hur and he saw a man as though he had been buried, a tired man who'd just been buried the same day. There was an awesome fragrance coming from him. And he realized that the fragrance was coming from the handkerchief. He tried to untie the handkerchief and he saw fresh blood on the forehead and a voice came saying, Put the handkerchief back. This is made by Sayyidah Zahra and tied by Hussein. 
And so, like I said in the first march, let's keep your handkerchiefs with you. Collect your tears, for these will be our shafa'a. Let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the tawfiq, to be of those who are able to manifest the behaviors of being branded Q-Hussein. Let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant all those who have been afflicted by this illness and other illnesses shafa. Ya Allah, we pray for all those who are in so much difficulty in the world. Whether we look at Yemen, we look at the recent bombings a few weeks ago, in, not bombings, the, the explosions in Lebanon, and all sorts of difficulties the world is going through. Let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them all najat in the name of Hussein. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiul alim.